YouTube! I'm Marinette Dupen Chang, in case you didn't know me. Um, I live in Paris, France, and my parents have the best bakery in all of Paris. So that's a, so a little introduction for me. Um, I am doing this video today for a friend named Sailor Lioka for Life. She has been going through a bit of a rough time lately. Um, she didn't, she couldn't really bring herself to tell you guys about um, all the craziness that's been going on. And um, so she asked me if I could make a video and if I could do it for her and let her viewers know what exactly has been happening um, in her life because she does feel it's important for people to know. Um, and, you know, I think it's really brave to, to, um, to even tell me about it. So, um, she asked if I could tell her story, um, for her. So, so my friend Sailor Lyoka for Life has been dealing with depression. It is, um, not necessarily always a mental illness, but it is seen as a medical problem. Um, and it is very difficult to get through. Um, she had been spiraling downward in a downward spiral for a good five, six months before, um, before she finally realized and got to a breaking point where she realized she couldn't, she couldn't deny that she was depressed anymore. Um, she had, it had started, some of the signs had started when she was doing, um, getting angry for no reason and snapping at people a little bit more than normal and she's sleeping all day which doesn't like her she's usually a very active person um her roommates and friends including me noticed um we did notice her um odd behavior um i had asked her too what was going on and she says she's just stressed you know um but uh we tried to talk about it but she would not admit that she was having issues. Um, so you can't really do anything when they won't admit the problem. Um, but I saw those early signs. Um, then I definitely knew when she started, uh, when she had chopped off her hair. Um, her hair was very long and blonde and Sailor Lioka for Life had um, took scissors and just whacked at it just to shorten it to do something new and she was in such a bad mental state when she did it. Um, I tried to cut it for her. I, um, I, t I, I cut it as short as she had whacked it um, so it looked like a haircut, an actual haircut. Um, so it just looked like a summer haircut and um, people thought it was cute and everything and, you know, um, so we just made it look like a summer haircut rather than her n not being okay. And she, um, and I knew, I, I knew the signs, I just couldn't do anything if she's not going to admit it. So I watched her spiral more and she, um, she'd leave me voice messages while she was coming home late from work. Um, half of them, they got more and more frequent of them being ones where she's crying and she just can't take it. And she's just venting out in these, but it's like, she's leaving work more and more often she was leaving work more and more often than not crying. And I knew things were getting bad and I tried talking to her about it. 
but she refused to listen to me about saying that she was depressed. And I didn't know at the time because she didn't tell me that she was suicidal. That part really hurt. It hurt that she didn't tell me that she was having thoughts like that. Um, she didn't tell me she was thinking of taking her own life, about ending it. And honestly, I can't imagine a world without her in it. Um, I, she didn't tell me any of that, and that hurts. And it, it does, but the only reason I even know now is because she's still here. She's still here with us. And um, at her other job, not the one that was making her cry, but the, the other one um, that she just started recently when things were getting worse, um, she had, um, there was something really bad that happened and her manager didn't handle it well. And it ended up hurting her emotionally um, really badly to the point where she had a breakdown at her other job. Uh, at her main job that she's been at for the past two and a half years. So that, um, that breakdown finally led to her admitting it. It finally led to her, um, admitting that she was depressed, that she was having depression thoughts, um, that she was using her coping mechanisms, coping mechanisms that she used when she was a child. Um, when we were kids, she used a lot of those coping mechanisms to help with her depression. Um, and that's what made her realize she couldn't lie to herself anymore. And she, uh, she talked to me and um, and her roommates and her therapist and we all agreed it would be good for her to go to the hospital because that's um, she's not okay and she is finally able to admit it and admit that she isn't okay and that's hard to do for a lot of people. So it's, um, we all supported her 100%. I'm so happy she finally understood because that way she can get help because when you're in a dark place like that, closing your eyes doesn't take you out of the dark place. Um, you're still there. You're just closing your eyes and imagining you're not there. So for her to be able to open her eyes, to open her eyes, to see what's really in front of her, so she can find a way out of that darkness. She can find a way out of that bad place when she opens her eyes to really admit and know she's there so she can get help. And the help she needs, um, the help she deserves. So that, um, that's what I'm here to talk about. Um, that's the story of what happened. She started cutting herself and then shortly before the final straw and she couldn't take it anymore. Um, it was definitely um, a relief and also a shock to hear it from her because I'm just glad she's still with us. I'm just glad she's still here. That she, she, she didn't jump in front of a car or anything and she didn't jump off a ladder or anything that she was thinking about doing because we love her a lot and she knows that but um 
something about voices when you're hearing them in your head that she explained to me um, is the voices in your head aren't nice most of the time. Um, with depression, the voices in your head are very mean. They tell you bad things and they know, they know how to get to your weaknesses and exploit your weakest moments and your weakest parts of your mind. And that's what depression does. It just exploits your weaknesses and it's awful. And it lies to you saying that you're worthless and that you're just overreacting and you're wasting everyone's time. So depression, that's some of the things that it's your own voice telling you it or some other voice or any voice telling you it and it's telling you lies and it's very good at it. It's very good. It's like having your own hawk moth, um, your own personal shadow moth in your head. Um, and it's awful because it's not even to achieve a goal except for death. So it, it is very difficult to deal with depression and it's even harder for people to watch you go through it and refuse to get help because you keep saying you're fine, you're fine. And saying you're okay because you can't afford to not be okay. You don't have time to not be okay. Um, that's not an option. Not being okay isn't an option. And I understand that. Um, I understand that a lot because I am, um, as you know, I am a superhero. I am Ladybug. And I, I have to hide my identity from everyone I love. And I have to keep that burden. And that's not easy to do. And, and let alone voluntarily lying, it, it's just not easy. And when you want to tell the truth, when you know the truth is the best thing, but you know you can't do it for, your, for the reasons that you know you can't. So it is hard. It is difficult, and especially when you're lying to yourself. I can't even imagine what that must feel like for her to have been denying herself so much. Um, so I'm here to say that to everyone there out there who's watching this and has depression or has noticed signs of depression, like thoughts of saying that you're worthless, thoughts saying that you're wasting people's time, thoughts that you don't matter, or thoughts that you're just in everyone's way, please, please know that that's not true. That's not at all true. And there are people who really love you. And there are people who really, will really, really miss you if you, if you escape all of this. It's not a real escape. You're just leaving the ones you love in pain. So, and I know, I know, it's not encouraging. <laughs> I guess that's not as encouraging as I would hope it would be, but just to anyone who is suffering it or knows someone who is showing signs of depression, um, help them, love on them, make sure they know you love them and you spend time with them so they have some good memories to lean back on and make sure to affirm affirmations are so important make sure to affirm to them that they are loved and that they have good qualities to them and that they have so much more to give to this world it's so if they won't admit they're depressed 
then make sure you are just loving them and loving them and affirm them that they have more to give to this world and that they remind them of all the talents they have and all the dreams and all the things they could do. Just remind them of those things, you know? You don't have to say it's like, don't die. <laughs> Don't kill yourself because don't do it like that. But like, let them know, you know, um, let them know that they are loved and sometimes just throw out their compliments and saying, you know, we should do this someday and we should do that someday. We should make these goals. We should, you know, we, we should work on videos, do something um take hikes rock climbing it doesn't have to be physical it, it, it could be painting or and to get to a certain degree um anything it, just something that they enjoy and makes them feel alive and that they're passionate about and if they don't know what that is then help them find it try new things figure it out what they might like you know you don't know until you try so, you know, find those things and help them, help them have an outlet, a passionate outlet, creative outlet for all of their passion. And because some days it's really hard, but some days get really, some days are really rough too. So, sometimes there's scopes for hard to rough days and then you're like, where is, where is the actual um, silver lining? Um, but um, there are better days and make sure that to give them those better days to be able to show them and remind them that there are, there are going to be better days. Um, and if you can create those better days for them, do that, you know, because for all you know, you could be the one thing that's helping them take one more step, one more step every single day, wake up one more day, keep being here on this earth, keep going, you know, you don't know what you can do in someone's life just by loving them. But um, make sure they know you appreciate them and that they're worth more than they feel they're worth. When you start seeing those signs, just do that, okay? Affirm to them they're loved. Give them better days. Create, create good memories with them. So, because you don't know how many moments you're keeping them off the ledge. So that that's my that's what I wanted to tell you guys. Um yeah. That's what I wanted to tell you guys. Uh and I wanted you guys to know I do love you. <laughs> I do care about everyone. Um even Chloe Bourgeois. I do care about everyone and I do want to protect you all from shout them off because no one deserves to feel like that and be used and exploited by someone like him. Um, so I do, um, I do care about you guys and I, I'm going to continue to protect you, um, to the best of my ability and we will beat him one day. So you don't have to live in fear of shout him off, making you his next victim. So, I guess that's the end of my video. On a brighter note, let's end this on a brighter note. Um, on a brighter note, have a good day. <laughs> I can't really think of anything else. Um, have a good day and keep sewing, keep knitting, keep doing the stuff you're passionate about. Those are 
just stuff I'm passionate about, but things you're passionate about. Um, and keep loving everyone in your life and pay attention, pay attention to them because you don't ever know and you would never want that news that someone is having those kind of problems. But the most you can do is be the person that's there to hear them out when they finally do come forward. And, you know, so just keep loving everyone. Keep loving, keep making videos and doing what you love to do. And I guess that's it for me. All right, this is Sylvia Oka for life. No, it's not. This is Marinette Dupin Chang. <laughs> Signing off. Bye, guys.